You know, I can tell who you worship by who you look the dumbest around. Some of y'all go crazy at like a Flames game. You're like, you don't understand we're in love. That's why we do this, you know. Um, and I love to see you when you're worshiping. And this is really practice for when you get to heaven. Because some of you are going to get to heaven and God's going to be like, is this your first time worshiping? And you're going to be like, I grew up in church. And he's like, well, what were you doing? Um, I just want to say that. You like that, Dr. Phil? I thought that was pretty. This is Dr. Phil. If you have any emotional problems or family problems, you can come talk to Dr. Phil and Nordine. You know what I love? I love watching. I love watching Cody. I love watching you put your hands in the air. There was a day when you thought that that was never going to happen, right? I love that. I love that. Man, you need to get around good worshipers if you're not a good worshiper. I just got to say that. I love that. Hey, uh, I'm Pastor Corey. If we haven't met, please come and meet uh, my wife and I, Pastor Aaron. Um, girls can be pastors too. Okay, and... I mean, you didn't think that was funny. The rest of the sermon's going to be tricky. Um, we moved here with about 30 people maybe uh, about six years ago. I guess we turned six, so definitely six years ago. And uh, what God has done, we're just, um, we're just pretty blown away by what God has done here. And so um, here's what we get to be a part of here. Uh, last week, I got to, I got to meet somebody uh, whose parents came to church maybe for the first time. I'm always a little sh um, shady on the details, but they're like, we have been praying for her to come to church for you don't know how long. And I'm like, I'm glad that we're the church that the 20-year-old prayer, you know, the 20 years of praying for somebody to come to church, I'm glad that we're that church. I'm glad that you're that church that somebody can come to. Like, we've been praying for this for so long. And I'm like, we'll take care of her. We got it. I uh, talked to another lady that gave her life to Christ last weekend. <laughs> Comes from addiction. This happens all the time here. It comes from, like, addiction's background. And this is what, this is what she says. She's like, well... My son's dad, I don't know when it was, some months ago, OD'd. He's not with us anymore. And he, she's like, I don't know. My son doesn't have any father figures. And I'm like, he's got father figures. He's got father's figures. Like, this is a family of God. Welcome to the family. This is what we do. I talked to another gal at a small group. Um, and she's like, I'm a first generation uh, Christian. And I'm like, hey, venue's full of you. That's awesome. Grandpa used to go to church. Mom and dad didn't. And you're back. And I'm glad you're back. She said, I think it was her that brought her sister, and she's like, my sister is one of those people that was, you know, is never going to go to church. But I, I drag her into church, and then I look over during church, and she's crying. And I told her after, I'm like, why were you crying? And she's like, I wasn't crying. That's why we turn the lights down and turn the music up. Because sometimes you just need to get right with God. Candace Reglin, who you see on stage, she's like, oh, you don't get it. She's like, I used to wonder about that, too, until I ugly cried through a whole service and then I'm glad the lights were down and the music was loud you know you don't want to who's close to you but far from God that needs to get here for Easter um, we have some incredible things planned but the service here and the, and the kids program is going to be incredible we also have a petting zoo too so if you have neighbors who are like far from God because people you know if, if you're inviting somebody to church they're like but I don't believe in God and be like do you believe in petting zoos because we have one of those and so, like, trick them. Just be like, hey, I'll, you know, you need to be in this parking lot at this time, and I'll have Slurpees there. And like, oh, there's a church. We should probably go. I mean, do I had a kid who say, say to me in the lobby, like, should I break into my friend's house and drag him to Easter on Easter morning? I'm like, yes. Why are you asking me simple questions? This is obvious stuff, guys. You can get forgiven. I invited um, our MP, uh, Mr. Richards, who he's like, if I'm in town, we're coming. And he's like, come on, Corey, just call me Blake we've been friends for a while. I'm like, well, I just preached a sermon about that. <laughs> so I'm like, no, nah, it's going to be Mr. Richards. I'm going to, I think the mayor is going to be here. Come on, invite somebody to church. Let's go. I invited my uh, dental assistant Friday afternoon. You know, I woke up Friday morning and I'm like, what should I do this afternoon? I, you know, I want to do the, the funnest thing I can think of. And so I went to the dentist. You know, the dentist, I'm going to go to the dental school where they, uh, the class where they're like, now what do we tell them when we have 15 things in their mouth? And they're like, literally, and they're like, hey, you have fingers, why don't you come put them in his mouth too, you know? And then here's the lecture, it's like, you need to relax. Well, you sit in the chair and I'll jam everything I've got in your mouth and we'll see if you relax, you know? It's like, if the oxygen mask comes down in the plane and breathe normally, If I'm aimed at the ground and I'm not going to miss, that's not going to happen. 
All right, come on. Loosen up a little bit. This is church. I, my dental assistant, I'm like, what are you doing at Easter? She's like, because she found out I was a pastor. I'm like, well, you got to go to church at Easter. I mean, oh, my goodness. You know Christers, right? They come to church for Christmas and Easter, right? Then they're like, oh, no, I'm totally, like, I'm super, <laughs> this is what she said, like, I'm super spiritual. And then she goes, I, I'm, like, into bird watching." not sure you know what spiritual means anyways I'm like you need to come to church and she goes well I need to get ahead of my spring painting and I'm like nobody cares about that it's Easter Sunday you need to get to church so I think a lot of people think that they're spiritual I'm not really sure what that means you know um, it's almost like saying like hey no like I have a great relationship with God I just show up at his house like twice a year like but we're super married and stuff all right, I'm just saying, I'm not just saying, like, what is that? Like, I don't know if you know what marriage is. Um, we have a baptism service coming up, speaking about, like, public declarations of faith. So you make a private decision to serve Christ. This is when we go public with it, and this is when we're like, hey, I'm making a commitment now. Like, I am off the market. You know, swipe and write, like, this is it. This is, what, <laughs> this is what I got. I'm, like, going public with my faith. Hold me to this. This is the way of life that I need to go. And somebody needs to, you've come back to Christ or you're coming to Christ, you've come to Christ, and our baptism list is filling up, just go to the brick wall and we will sign you up or just give you some information about baptism. So it's going to be good. Now, let me preach the sermon that I didn't want to preach because I had seven better sermons Tuesday morning, and God still cannot respect my sermon schedule. It's like he doesn't even care sometimes. I call Pastor Aaron down. I'm like, I don't know. I, this is, I have seven sermons I could preach about this text. Thanks, Renee. I have seven sermons. I'm going to preach a sermon called The, the Witch at Endor. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to like it. The first service liked it, so. You're not like, they're not better than you, right? Okay. They're not going to be like more responsive than you, though, right? Oh, yeah. I know. They were out of bed earlier than you, but, you know, that doesn't make them better, though, right? Okay. I'm going to say it's a sermon about other voices. Um, Saul, on the last night of his life before he gets wiped out, he and his sons, everybody dies. It's one of those like awful movies where everybody dies. That's what happens the next day. The last day of his life, Saul consults a witch. Um, I'm going to talk about other voices. There's other voices that there's there's other voices that, that the enemy is trying to get into your head, and we're going to talk about some of them today, how to handle it. Um, um, I'm into like motorcycle riding. So like I have like Ducatis. Um, that's what I'm into. Some of you have Harleys and I'm like, you know, I'd rather wipe the bugs off the front of my helmet than the back of my helmet when they catch up with me. <laughs> that's Emil's joke, by the way. So if you don't like that, go talk to Emil. Do you guys not know who Emil is? He's a South African. He's like Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to talk to him. I thought that was funny. Um, and so what we did is we, because it's hard to communicate with helmets, we got those, those things so that I can talk to Pastor Erin. And that's one thing she loves is me constantly talking in her head. <laughs> and so she got it. Like, I thought this was for music. I'm like, no, it's for so I can talk to you, like, constantly. <laughs> and then every now and again when she's tired of me talking, I can hear this, like, beep. <laughs> and I'm like, she's back into music. And then her head starts doing this on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> and so one time a weird thing happened, though, because we were with uh, Sean and Nasty. Are they in this service or are they serving somewhere? So Sean and Nasia, because um, they both have motorcycles. You know, girls can have motorcycles now. <laughs> if you're new, this is, this is what we do here, by the way. Sarah's got one. Nicole was sitting, all three of them were sitting over there. All, all the girls had motorcycles. They're like, what? Um, oh, it's going to get worse before it gets better, guys. <laughs> so anyways, uh, Pastor Aaron was listening to music or something, and then what happened, because we were riding with Sean or Sean and Nasty, I can't remember, what happened was she started hearing little girls' voices in her head. Now, she already has enough voices in her head, and so this was like a lot, and I could feel her starting to get agitated on the back of a bike, which is a bit alarming. So what you really want on the back of a motorcycle is the person who's, um, who's going to the destination and driving really in your head, but these other voices started to come in, this is what they said. It was, she thought, is it a minivan driving by with kids in it that hijacked my... My frequency, what it was, was Sean's kids talking to Alexa. Hey, Alexa, call dad. And then she starts hearing three little girls having a conversation with dad, mostly with Alexa, because they didn't know what was going on in her ears. 
And that's what the enemy wants to do with your life. He wants to hijack the voice of God that's actually going to the place you want to go because there's three voices. There's God's voice, there's the enemy's voice, and you're like, I don't really believe in the devil. And I'm like, who made country music? <laughs> I don't want to see. Who was booing? Somebody over here was booing. I just want to feel, I just want to, I got cheers. Somebody, okay. That's just a joke that I have, but seriously. Um, so there's God and there. <laughs> I got all distracted with that. Who, in, who made cats? Okay, <laughs> I could go on. Who cheers for Manchester? Okay, Manchester United. Okay, um, enough of that. Don't distract me. Okay, so there's God and there's the devil and then there's your flesh. Your flesh is like, I just want to do this thing, you know? Your flesh is that part of you that you shouldn't trust, that you want everybody to accept, but you shouldn't accept. That's like the, it's a junior high idiot inside of every person. And so your flesh and the devil are going to the same place. It just takes your flesh a little longer to get there. So really there's two destinations. There's the place the enemy wants you to go, and then there's the place that God wants you to go. So um, now let me talk to you a little bit about, about voices because Saul doesn't start his kingship with like, you know what I'd like the last night of my life to be before I get wiped out in battle and all my kids die? And you know what I'd like to do the last night? I, I think I'm going to consult a witch. Because, you know, if there's a people group that are doing well, those witches, they got it together. It doesn't start that way, but it's how it ended for him. And this uh, sermon is going to, to uh, be interesting because I'm not just talking to, you might be new to faith and there's other voices. You know that there's a lot of voices out there trying to get in your head, right? But I'm talking to church people because I'm a pastor's kid and I've heard church people you want to talk about listening to other voices. I'm like, I don't even know. Well, I think God is telling me this. I'm like, that's not something God would ever say, though. That's something the enemy would say. Well, why do we think that? So, so I'm going to kind of go at, at both groups, which is everybody. Um, here's here's our kind of our quote for the day. The enemy loves to piggyback God's voice in your ear. He likes to piggyback it because what he's not going to win is an all-out war with God. And so... What he's got to do is he's got to piggyback on. So it's like if you've had Google Maps, sometimes I'll do this because I'm, I don't know why I do this. I'll put Google Maps on, but then I want to see if Apple Maps has a better way to get there. So Google Maps starts talking, and Google Maps is, you know, better. And it starts like, okay, so turn left in 50 meters, right? And then Apple Maps will come on, turn left in 50 meters. For 3.6 kilometers, and then for 3.6 kilometers, right? So what the enemy wants to do is he doesn't really mind you listening to God's voice if he can get another voice in there. And then what he does, though, because he won't contradict God's voice. This is how tricky he is. He won't contradict it. He won't say, turn right. No, no. He'll say, he'll echo it. Left. He'll echo God's voice. Why? Because he needs credibility. Turn left. You turn left, you're like, oh, that worked out. Turn left. Oh, okay. For 3.6 kilometers. You know what drives me crazy about maps is when they tell you to drive straight. Like, I was already going to do that. <laughs> continue driving straight. In 3.6 kilometers, continue driving straight. Like, okay. <laughs> stop at stop signs. You know, anyways. For 3.6 kilometers, continue driving. For 3.6 kilometers, continue driving straight. For turn right, turn right. Because, but eventually what will happen is you'll get to a crossroads. Now, the devil will take years to get you there. He doesn't care as long as he gets you there. He'll take years to like echo, 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 until all of a sudden one day you get to a crossroads and God is like, turn left and it's going to be hard and it's going to be dark and it's going to be tragedy, but you're going to go through it the right way. Or turn right and there's like roses and sunshine and less commitment and, and it's going to be easier down here. And you're like, oh, but these voices now, they're kind of about the same because right? they've both been right so far. You have to understand every other voice comes from a source, even well-meaning people in your life. So why would the enemy trap you with a voice you don't trust? He not stupid. Well-meaning voices are still speaking. Every voice comes from a source and every source wants you to go somewhere. Here are some voices. You ready? Fleshly friends. Fleshly Christian friends. Like, yeah, you don't, nah, you don't really need to. Sexuality. Like, no, nah, it's not really that anymore. We've evolved. I think we're evolving backwards, everybody, back into animals, you know. It's not the life God wanted for us. Here's things like tarot cards. 
palm reading. I'm just getting into some of the new age. So I'm just going to like list a horoscopes, angel cards, that's a thing. Well, there's nothing wrong with angels. No. I like angels. <laughs> the news. What, what are we talking about? Well, no, I'm just, I'm just, let me hurt your feelings a little bit. I'm like, yeah, they're voices. Somebody's whispering something that wants you to go somewhere. And here's what you do. It's just information, and I'll know the difference. And the enemy's like, got him. Just, oh, no, just hold on. Well, you mean I shouldn't watch the news? Okay, I'm going to say some of you shouldn't watch the news because you go crazy. No, I'll show you how to deal with it. Here's my favorite, unbelieving believers. I'll explain that in a minute, too. Unbelieving believers. Spurgeon says they're the worst kind of believers. Uh, your own brain. Funny how people, their lives get changed by God, and God works a miracle and saves them from, like, total destruction. And then a year later, they're like, I did it. I'm like, you did it. You did the other thing that got you there. And now you're, now you did it. Yeah, I do that too, so that's why I know that one. Your kids, your kids' voices, homes now are centered around children. That's a problem. They put their pants on backwards. That's a problem. Health and wellness. Oh, no, these are, hold on. The voices, there's still voices. Education, greed, fortune cookies. Now, listen, I love fortune cookies because I love Chinese food. Okay, here's the last fortune cookie I got, though. As I'm opening the fortune cookie, this is what I read. This is what I read. And I said, as I'm, as I'm opening the fortune cookie, I told my kids, this is going to be my new life motto from now on. This is what I read. For a good cause, wrongdoing may be virtuous. I'm like, yes! <laughs> Finally! The enemy wants to hijack a voice. And let me tell you about something that happened to a church family one time. We just baptized them. I think two months later, uh, this is early on in the church plant. So I needed, I needed pastors. And so Pastor Peter Haas, who's my pastor now, and his executive pastor, Nate, they actually came here when we were in the theater and uh, preached on a weekend. And I'm like, oh, God, thank you for sending this is exactly what I was praying for. Well, the family that we had just baptized heard the same sermons that I heard and, and then they, by Wednesday, I think I heard somebody say, like, they're starting to get weird. And I'm like, what? We're starting to get weird about what? There's something about Pastor Peter and Nate that they didn't like. And I'm like, what? I heard the same thing. And I'm like, yes! By Friday, on date night, Pastor Aaron tells me, you got to call them. They're going to leave the church. Five days. Five days. If you can leave a church in five days, you might not be saved. Five days to leave the church that brought you adoption in five days. This is what happened. This is what happened. Because my mom's side is Irish, so they're kind of a superstitious bunch. She was Irish. Her mom came over from Ireland. Ireland's a weird place because it's all but kind of like religion, Irish, you know, both. I have both Protestant and Catholic in my family lines, which for the Irish was not a good thing to have in the same family. Nobody reads history. Oh, okay. So her mom comes over, but then superstition is mixed. You, you get this. Whoever's Irish is laughing about this. But so then superstition gets mixed in, which is this sense of like, you know what? I'm, I have a bad feeling. If I, if I don't do this thing, you know, I used, to be supersti I used to be a superstitious church kid. When I was 18, I'd be like, I got to walk on the left side of the sidewalk like so many steps. And if I step on a crack and... Now, I'm not a mystic now. You think this is hilarious now. But there was a sense of, like, something bad is going to happen if I talk to that person in this way. Something, it's just this other thing that started to hijack its way in there. And this happened to this family. And I knew what was happening because, because the church was going to be their lifeline to the gospel, and the enemy was just trying to get them out. I spent 50 minutes on the phone, 5-0, which is, for me, is like 10 lifetimes, on the phone, saying, can you just trust me? I'm thinking, aren't you the people we just baptized two months ago? And now you're basically the Holy Spirit? Now you basically know more than I knew? No. About all of this? What had happened was, they started having this weird feeling about like, I don't know, I feel weird about this. And like, Pastor Nate was bragging about how much money he had. I'm like, he took an 11 twelfths pay cut to work at that church. He's making 1 twelfth of what he used 
That's what it cost him. It's the same sermon. He's bragging about how much money. I'm like, how much money he gave? He wasn't bragging about that either. Same sermon. I'm like, what's going on? They ended up, that's the last I ever talked to him. Last I ever saw him. Well, I didn't even see him there. I saw him on the Sunday when I thought everything was fine. Now I don't uh, talk to church people on date night. <laughs> you got church people problems? I don't care. I'll go for unchurched people problems. If somebody loses a family member, something actually happens. But if you're just making crap up, church people, I don't care on date night. <laughs> just show up on Sunday and God will sort your weird brain out. I got a bad feeling about it. You know what I don't have a bad feeling about? Just come to church on Sunday and let us sort it out. You can be all weird and take up everybody. <laughs> people always do this. They'll miss the Sunday sermon, and then they'll be weird all week and want counseling. And I'm like, you know, if you were at Sunday, I wouldn't have to talk to you about this right now. <laughs> Sorry, too soon. Okay. <laughs> now, if I was the devil... <laughs> local pastor thinks he's the devil... You know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't bait the trap with lies. I'd bait the trap with the truth. He's not stupid. He's met lots of people just like you. Well, I'm unique. He doesn't know how I think. Because you're not super obvious. He's seen 50 million people like you who think kind of like you, who... He knows how to, tra he's not going to trap you with a lie. He even, in the temptation of Christ, he didn't just come across and start lying to him. Be like, turn right, turn right. He's like, he preached scripture to him. He just took it out of context. If I was the devil, you know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't stop you from reading the YouVersion Bible app, which you need to get and read every morning. Uh, friend me on there, by the way. There's also other accounts that are not me that I may have made, but I don't know how to get rid of them. So <laughs> if you're like, if he's super unresponsive, it's the wrong account and I don't know what to do. So that was before I knew Renee, so that's, that's on me. So, but you know what I wouldn't do? I wouldn't, as you're reading, what I wouldn't do is like, that's not true. That's not what I would whisper to you if I was the devil. You know what I would whisper? That's not for you. If you're married, there's a ready-made, oh, it's for, it's for your husband. It's not for you. Somebody's sitting there right now thinking this sermon is for somebody else. Oh, I trapped you. Oh, how did he know? Okay. Religion is based. When the enemy sets up a false religion, you know what he doesn't do? He doesn't put an idol named Jerry in front of your thing that demands child sacrifice, and you open your door one day, and there's this weird-looking idol. <laughs> has he done that to you? Because, you know, like, this is a weird feel going on here. Like, has that happened to you? That's a problem. You need to get prayed for now. <laughs> Just walk into the prayer room right there where they're praying. Um... You know what he's not going to do? He's going to model a false religion based after uh, the best religion, which is Christianity. Well, all religions lead to the same place. No, they do not. There are really three voices, but there are really two voices. And either Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, or he's a liar, or he's a lunatic. So we're, we're stuck there. And I always say people are like, hey, I'm exploring religions. I'm like, explore Christianity. We will stand Christianity up against anything. Absolutely. It'll speak for itself. Now, here, but here's the other thing. If I'm the devil, I'm not going to model it after something that doesn't work. I'm going to model it after something that does. I'm just going to start piggybacking for a little bit, right? Um, and this is, this is the basis of why people seek religions. It's really three things that, that I can think of. Health, long life, and happiness. Whatever can promise me these things. Okay, well, there are lots of voices that are promising you health and long life and happiness. Just think about this. And if you came to Christ, you're like, that's why I came to Christ. I would say go to the Alpha small group that we're starting. That's like exploring the basis of Christianity because those are the wrong reasons to come to Christ because sooner or later Jesus is going to say, hey, that's great. Um, these are kind of byproducts of serving me, but then you're going to have this thing called the cross where, where Jesus is like, take up your cross daily and follow me. You're like, this doesn't feel healthy. And I don't know if you know this about the cross, but you die. You're like, I want my life to be resurrected, and Jesus is like, great, but you got to die, though, first, right? Like, that's, that's kind of, like, the only thing that... Some of you have dreams that haven't been resurrected because if God would resurrect, they're not quite dead. They're still about you. And your dreams should never be about you. It should be about helping the person. But it should be about finding somebody in, who's in hiding and saving them. Your gift is never supposed to be about you. It's supposed to be about the people you're reaching. And until it's not, it's got to die. 
See, old Israel, what they used to do and what, how they got off track was the enemy didn't come and be like, hey, stop serving Yahweh, stop serving Jesus, and start serving this other thing. What he's going to say is like, serve Jesus, but you might need a little supplement. So like, serve Jesus, but this is what, what they did in old Israel. But if you want your crops to grow, you better make a little sacrifice to Baal over here. Uh, if you want fertility, like you can't have babies, well, you better maybe consider this other little thing here, this other voice. And this is kind of their requirements. But keep doing this. But like, let's just add. You want to be healthy? Well, you better listen to this podcast. Okay, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Other voices come from other sources, and other sources are going someplace. So what do I do, though? Because, and I'm going to say this and hurt somebody's feelings. It's not the truth that saves you. Some church verse is like, yes, it is. Yeah, I finally got him. Okay. Not the truth the way we're thinking about the truth. What we're thinking about, when we say truth, what we mean are facts. Like, I found the truth that's like, oh, this is my truth. This is my truth. Like, I stopped eating Big Macs and I lost weight. That's not a truth, everybody. This is a fact, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, it set me free. It set my body free. I'm like, well, it's not a truth, though. This is what saves you. Jesus saves you. He happens to be the truth. So everything that's truth out there has its source in him or it's not truth. He is the truth. Like this is where it began. Everything out here. So you don't get a like, but what the devil will do, he'll piggyback on the truth out here and then you'll start saying like, oh, so this is kind of true too. And like, this is kind of getting me to. So the question, am I under because this is what the enemy wants. <laughs> so go to yoga and learn how to stretch. This body does not do yoga. <laughs> this body, like this morning, all the way down the stairs, I'm like, crack, 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 crack. Oh. And somebody out there is like, you need to do yoga. I'm like, obviously. <laughs> but I'm not going to, and here's why. Because I don't have 30 seconds to stretch and hold it. I don't have 30 seconds. Flash fry that hamburger and give it to me. I, 10 minutes to stretch my body. That is a lifetime for somebody. This is like dog years over here. So <laughs> I'm going to go to the chiropractor every two weeks so that I can continue walking. Now, <laughs> but stretching is good for your body. But eating healthy is good for health and long life and happiness. Yeah, yeah. But careful, the enemy wants you to come under another voice. And not just to come under that part of what they're saying, but to come under the other part that they're saying too. Because then we get into like s the spiritual side of, well, the energy of this and the energy. Okay. And I feel this when I'm, eh, bring it back here or, or there's no salvation happening. There's no resurrection happening out here. This will keep you, this is what drives me crazy. The one person that you'll invite to Easter whose soul might be saved, and this is what we say, we've got a 10-minute window in a service that is somebody's eternity. That's why we don't want your crying baby beside him. Like, I love your Christian crying baby. <laughs> but you know who I love even more? The person beside you. And your child needs to be... This isn't designed for them. And you can't worship with your child here. You're going to be parenting. And they can't worship with you either. They need to, their own relationship with Jesus. And when they're 16, they're not going to care about what you think anyways. And you, they'd better have youth leaders. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> okay, but. You don't get it until it's your brother sitting there. And you've been praying for them, for him for 20 years. And he's here and we got 10 minutes. And it's an eternity for him. Then you get it. Where was I even going with all that? I don't even know. I'm just going to keep moving. Okay. I can't even remember where I was going. Where do you think I was going? <laughs> okay. All right. Here's a litmus test. If what you're listening to is more important than who, you're already off track. Well, they have good things to say. The devil has good things to say. It's the wrong basis for listening to a voice. It just is. If what you're listening to is more important than who, then you're going to make the same mistake as Eve made in the garden. Well, I don't know. What do you say? You know, the serpent makes sense. Why are you talking to a snake? Where's Adam? Like, chop that snake up. Why would anybody own a snake? Why would anybody have a pet Satan? Chop that thing up. 
Flush it. Let's go. Okay. I'm also afraid of snakes. We, we, were, in, we were in Florida. We were in Florida last uh, summer for vacation. And my wife's like, hey, I saved you a spot at this, like, reptile show. I'm, I thought it was going to be, like, alligators and stuff. I can get on with that. This guy walks out with a snake. I look up once, look down, look up twice, walked out. I don't need this. I don't need the devil wrapped around some guy's neck. Okay, let me get going here. Stop. Listen. Who's really saying it, and where do they want me to go? Because it's not... The enemy, of course the enemy is going to send a trusted source. He's not going to send somebody you don't trust. He's going to send you somebody you do trust. They may not know, but they're speaking something that's being whispered to them that's trying to get you someplace. When Saul saw the vast Philistine army, he became frantic with fear. He asked the Lord what he should do, but the Lord refused to answer him, either by dreams or by sacred lots or by prophets. Listen. Repentance is what the Lord responds to. More time when you haven't done the last thing, he's going to stop talking because he's not wasteful and he's not stupid. And you don't get to use him and like, hey, I don't like that last thing you said to me. Well, you're not going to say the next thing until you do the last thing. And he can't call for the priest because he had the whole village killed, right? Like, I should call for the priest. Oh. <laughs> Saul then said to his advisors, watch this, watch this, watch this. He didn't start talking to witches. His advisors, people that were close to him, people that got close to him. Find a woman who's a witch, who's a medium, who speaks to, you know. Do you have any friends who are like, I see dead people? Like, literally get prayed for right now. <laughs> That's not good. Okay. Um, and so I can go and ask her what to do. What? Look, I can guarantee the week before that he wasn't there, but he's here now. His advisors replied, oh, you're crazy. Like, seek the Lord. What's this? Where's the witch? Let's go get the witch, you know? That's not what they said. They said, oh, we know where there's a, there's a witch. There's a witch at Endor. Who's, like, super old like me here? Remember the Ewoks Battle for Endor, the movie? I'm like, that word seems familiar as a kid, and I'm, and I'm like, and then I'm like, oh, that's not good. Dad's not going to let me watch this. <laughs> My parents were Christians in the 80s and 90s where people were the most Christian. <laughs> Nate, Nate Bargatze's comedy special. Anyways, you got to watch that. It's pretty funny. <laughs> I'm like, I can't watch this. Just don't tell dad. Okay. So, listen, if you have friends that know where witches live, that's a problem. They're not good people. There's so much I want to say. Okay. So Stahl distinguished himself by, uh, disguised himself. He did not distinguish himself. He did the opposite. He took his, he, he wore ordinary clothes instead of his royal robes. David takes off his royal robes to worship on the street, like something you need to learn how to do, because that's where the honor is. Saul takes his royal robes off to consult the other god. Then he went to the home accompany, uh, at night, accompanied by two of his men. I have to talk to a man who has died, he said. Will you call up his spirit for me? Are you trying to get me killed, she said. You, Saul has outlawed all the, all the witches, basically, and all who consult the spirits of the dead. Are you setting a trap for me? Saul took an oath in the name of the Lord and promised, as surely as the Lord lives, nothing bad will happen to you for doing this. Yeah, that seems, that seems like that's a lot. I don't know who would do that. I don't think an unchurched person would do that. I think only a church person would do that who would say that because no, unchurched people don't talk about the Lord. And also the life expectancy, as sure as the Lord lives, I promise you that you'll be okay. The life expectancy of a witch and the Lord are kind of different. <laughs> How can this happen? Well, it doesn't start here. You know, the wrong advisor is whispering in his ear. Finally, the woman said, like, I think if he'd have pursued God the same way he pursued this witch. Finally, like, he's just kept like, you got to help me, you got to help me, you got to help me. The woman said, well, whose spirit do you want me to call up? Samuel, Saul replied. When the woman saw Samuel, so Samuel actually shows up. Now, she screamed, uh, you've deceived me, you're Saul. Now, this is not like if you're out there playing around with the devil. This is not like, hey, it worked. No, what this means, like, in the original language, is like she is so, sh so shocked by what shows up that she freaks out. So this is actually God hijacking her. And what the devil is trying to do, God hijacking her to give Saul one last chance. So because she would have called up a familiar spirit. Because you can't call somebody who's in the next life. You can't call them back. So you want comfort. You want to hear that everything's okay. A familiar spirit, like that if God has angels, 
and the Holy Spirit, the devil has demons who will, can also speak to you, who can also look like and sound like, right? And so that's who she's used to. And this other thing shows up and she's like, oh my goodness, it's actually, you know, like she doesn't. Don't be afraid, the king told her. What do you see? I see a God or an Elohim coming out of the earth. She's like, this is all, what does he look like? He's an old man wrapped in a robe. Remember that robe? Saul realized it was Samuel. He fell to the ground. Why have you disturbed me by calling me back? Samuel asked God. Like, I got better places to be right now than right here with you. Because I'm in deep trouble. The Philistines are at war with me. God has left and won't reply, reply by prophets or dreams. So I've called for you to tell me what to do. Sam was like, what do you think my only job was? I speak for the Lord. He's not speaking to you? What do you want me to say? Want me to make something up? Make you feel better? The Lord has done. He said, why ask me since the Lord has left you and become your enemy? Come on up, worship. The Lord has done just as he said he would. He has torn the kingdom from you and given it to your rival, David. And then the next day, everybody dies. Okay. <laughs> so I have two questions. And this year, like, am I under another voice, Pastor? I'm going to give you two questions. Then I think you, you if, if any of this is kind of resonating in you, I don't think figure it out. I think get prayed for and have the Lord figure you out. I think that's better. Because, look, you're listening to the other voices. And here's what I would say. If you're defending a voice, that's the one. Because the Lord doesn't need defense. Question number one. Does the word of God matter more or less after they speak? The word of God, the canon of scripture, the truth written down. God's words written through human authors, the words of God. Does the word of, I'm pointing at my iPad because that's where it is for me. Does the word of God matter more or less after they speak? If it's less, that voice has got to get turned off. It's another voice from another source. If you're starting to pick and choose morality, like I like this, but I like we've evolved. You're looking at the New Testament, and you're like, yeah, that doesn't really mean that. What voice are you hearing that from? Oh, there's, there, there is. Turn off. It's going to displease God. You're going to make a Frank and Jesus that doesn't exist and can't save. Frank and Jesus can't save you. Because uh, Frank and Jesus never demands that you die. Resurrection comes after death, right? I saw this in a church sign during COVID. Trust in God and Dr. Hinshaw. And I'm like, well, they weren't kidding. Well, you don't like Dr. Hinshaw? I love Dr. Hinshaw. We're best friends. Well, you don't think she's smart? I think she's very smart. Anything wrong with Dr. Hinshaw? I'm like, I don't know. Trust in God and Dr. Hinshaw? And we did. I got thinking, oh, what did that religion offer? Like, Dr. Paul is a great doctor, but I don't worship at that altar for health, long life, and happiness. You can help me. That's good. That's a good thing. That's, no, there's some good stuff in there. But he thinks it came from God. He thinks that ultimate help comes from God. That's what he thinks. Canadians used to serve. Can I say, we weren't religious, but we were because we served health care. Come on. Health, long life, and happiness. We're going to do everything. Every <gasps> He's just getting into COVID. No, I'm just telling you, like it revealed the gods of the people government. Sorry, I'm just shocked that we believe that we trust government. It's made up of people. Have you met people? If we put you in government, I would trust it even less. And then religion. And what I see God doing right now is he's flipping religion back to Christianity. You're like, hey, no, and here's the voice. Okay, now just hear me out. Question number two. Does the church of God matter more or less after they speak? Because the church is the bride of Christ, and you don't get to hate the bride of somebody that you say you love. And you don't get to make yourself part of a different bride. You don't get to stay at home and not be part of the bride and still call yourself married. Does the church matter more or less after they speak? Because if it matters, this is where we get to the unbelieving believers who are like, I would rather talk to a heathen person who's like, why do you volunteer at church? than a church person who's like, you got to be careful because that church will burn you out. Volunteering. This church doesn't burn out people volunteering. If you burn out volunteering here, you're doing something wrong. Or you just forgot to care about people in their 10-minute window of eternity. 
put the big rocks in first. Maybe you needed help with the rest of the priorities in your life because they're all about the same to you and all the voices are about the same. But when you put the big rocks in first, everything else fits in. It will. And I'm thinking, who else would say like, hey, you got to be careful about how far you go in Christianity? Oh, the devil, right? I've heard that somewhere. Oh, yeah. It's weird. Turn it off before it turns you off to God. Last thing I'm going to say is, you don't know any other voice, anything. You owe God for the salvation of your soul and this adoption. If you owe anything to anybody else by way of obligation, it is a false obligation to a false thing. You're like, but my mom has good things to say, and she's got some bad things to say that are going to lead you into sin. Be like, hey, mom, you can talk about these things, but you can't talk about these things. Hey, dental, dental assistant, you can work on my mouth, but you can't talk to me about spirituality because bird watching is not spiritual. Hey, um, high school math teacher, you can teach me math, but let's leave out the sexuality. Let's leave out the, do the math, but leave out the morality. Investors, yeah, show me how to do this, but I'm not doing it for your motives because I'm earning this so that I have more to give. That's why I'm doing this, but don't tell me that this is all about me. Now, those other voices are going to holler a little bit, but the best thing you can do for them is to turn them off. The best way you can honor them is to turn them off and make God's voice the only voice in your life. The best thing for their future is that you do that for them. Tell me that your kids after venue kids don't love Jesus more. You know, I have a family, a new family in church. They're like, you know why we came to church? Because you're an awesome preacher and Paul plays a great guitar. No, they're like, we don't even know who that is. Your sermons are terrible. No, that's not what they said. They said, we, this is our church. You know why? Because our kids talk about Jesus and what they learned. And they love the word of God and church. Every time we get in that car, they tell us what they learned from Jesus. That's why you go to a church. That's why you go to a church. All right. This is a super long sermon. Sorry. Sorry, venue kids. That's on me. Okay. Um, can we teach you a song? We're going to rework Rattle for Easter, and we need some uh, guinea pigs, and I feel like you're pretty willing. You guys ready to go? You ready to sing Rattle? Remember now, as we sing this song, the reason God's voice has gotten quieter in your ears is because other voices have gotten louder. God is still speaking. We just need to turn the other ones 